Hola, buenos días. Estoy Adán aquí en Tijuana, México, eh, aquí con mi amigo Miner. Miner, ¿cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿Y por qué estás aquí ahora? Um, en inglés, por favor. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Vasquez. Um, I was born in uh, Zamora, Michoacán. Uh, that's down south from Tijuana. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. I was uh, raised in L.A. Yeah. And we got to meet Mario here at the Lucky Sevens Tattoo Shop in Tijuana in the Revolution District because our incredible cameraman, Aaron Askew, was here getting a tattoo. It's now on the wall, this beautiful lion, and he had a great experience here. So I got to say, good tattoo artist, highly recommend it. But we're here to talk about a bigger issue, obviously, and your story represents uh, a, a, you know, one, one of those great you have a, a, a great cross-border life. You know, how, did, how did you end up being born here and then living in L.A.? Well, about the age of uh, maybe like three, four years old, uh, my parents decided uh, to take uh, me and my brothers and my sister across to L.A., you know, look for whatever is like a better life or something. Uh, so I get back down to LA. I was a child looking for a place to stay. Well, hold on. Let me let me get into that real quick so people understand the difference here. I mean, coming down here, this is my first thing hanging out in Tijuana. It's like a, a big sprawling ghetto of San Diego to not be uh, too demeaning about it. But but what is it that someone here living in Tijuana is looking for as a difference going to LA? Um. Well better paid jobs, uh, just a better living, you know, just the streets. Everything is different, you know, uh, transportation. If you really look at it, money-wise, it's, it's a whole different thing. Better opportunities. What are the challenges of living in Tijuana? Uh, the challenges. Damn. I don't, I don't know. But you're here and you're comfy now. You got a decent job, right? Yeah, uh, but challenges I really much kind of like new people and kind of taught me around. If you don't really know, it's like you're going to get lost in the streets of Tijuana, you know. Uh, you come from being in L.A., Orange County. There's a lot of people all over the states that come and they get deported through San Isidro to Tijuana. And uh, sometimes they don't know uh, where to go, what to do. And they turn into, uh, you know, drugs. And sometimes they just, from there, you, they get lost. I've seen that a lot. So you were in L.A. from when you were about three years old until when? Uh, till I was, um, let me see, two years ago. I was 29, 28. And how'd that happen? Um, well, actually, I've been deported three times you know <laughs> wait 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 it, it ain't good it, it, it's not good i mean it's not a situation to laugh about but no, no, no. what's funny is that like it didn't stick the first time <laughs> it just didn't because i mean you get deported i got deported in 2009 for a crime i i committed in 2005 which carried a felony and that 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 carried a strike you know so I get out here in 2009, I stood out here for two years. That time it was very tough, you know, getting, I didn't really know anybody. Uh, my family helped me out, but I just knew I had to get across to the border. I had my daughters, I had my mom, my, I, they're still over there, you know? So I had a lot to go back for, you know? I still do, but it's just different situation. So you've crossed over illegally three times. How did you do it? Um, I, uh, I have a brother, he's an American citizen. I use his passport, you know, just uh, went right through there. So easy paperwork trick. It's easy to defeat the system because it's just based on a photograph on a government ID, right? I, I, well, it's based on that and how good you play that part, you know what I mean? Because they, I guess they're trained to, to see if you get nervous, to see if you're lying. Because they ask you not just one time, not two times, three, four. They try to break you down, you know? And you just gotta beat it. But overall, it was pretty easy. Uh, 
when you know English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you think you'd want to see changed for border policy? Damn, I, at this time, at this point, I'm not even, I don't even care right now. Like, <laughs> I'm over here, I'm doing my thing over here, you know? I mean, I see a lot of people, I'm in Tijuana, a lot of people try to get across. You can't meet anybody who's not, not trying to get across. What would happen if there was just no border here? Like, how would that change things in this community or in the United States or the economics of the situation in general if there was just no border, just people freely able to travel? Mm. I don't know. I can't picture that. Um, guess everybody be everywhere, you know. It it's, takes you more than that because of the drugs, because of guns, because it, it's a whole different play right there. Well, I got to say, you know, I bought some weed here in Tijuana, and it was freaking terrible. <laughs> if I was a serious pot smoker, like, I got to, if you're a serious pot smoker, and you're an American coming to vacation in Tijuana, you got to smuggle weed into Mexico now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you think of President Trump? Um, damn, what do I think about him? A lot of things, you know. I can say he's a stupid Man, he's an idiot. He's, I don't know, but he they he knows what he's doing, you know. But everybody hates him. Um, all them deportations, they never gonna stop. Uh, well, let me let me like home in on something here, because I don't I don't really care what you think of Donald Trump as a person, you know, or the bigger political picture. I don't think he's dumb, but just sidebar, like, obviously he's clever enough to have won the contest of who gets to be the front man for the American government, but specifically, he was elected largely on anti-immigration sentiment. He was elected on the promise to build a wall. He was elected on the promise of deporting people and strengthening immigration policies. What do you think of that and the implications of that for your life, your situation here, and maybe what that says about the American people? Mm. Fuck you, Trump. <laughs> I, it's just, man, fuck him, you know? He's... Fuck him. That's pretty much it. Like he has no no respect, no no nothing. It's just selfish motherfucker, you know? I'm sorry, but <laughs> fuck you. All right, well so what do you think this says about the American people? That the American people I would say we, but I I didn't vote for Trump. You know, what what do you think it says that the, the, the uh, I mean, and it was only about a quarter of the population that actually, less than a quarter of the population that actually voted for Trump, but it's a major chunk of the American people who are behind this policy. What do you think that says? What does that, what does that tell you about the American people, maybe? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it was just more business-wise than, than people, you know? It was just more money over what people care. Mm-hmm. So you think the American people have been fooled into believing that they're going to be better off economically by keeping people out? Yeah. I mean, you know that's not true, right? That like you bring, if, if there's a demand for labor, if there's a demand for business, you want to let that business happen freely. You don't want to have government interfere with that. I mean, it's kind of sad almost that if that's what you think it is, that the American people have been tricked into thinking, hey, you'll be better off financially if we use the force of government to violently prevent people from doing business with us who want to do business with us? Uh, that's, that's, I think that's been a problem for a while. They say that, that I say my people, but all Hispanic people, Latino, uh, getting to the States looking for a, a better opportunity, taking their jobs when nobody wants them jobs. You know, people do it, they get underpaid under the table. They don't care. They just do it to, you know, to feed their families, to just to, to be better with for their families. But I don't know. I don't know what happened there, you know, like. All right. Well, then last question. If you had an opportunity to say something to every American who voted for Trump, what would it be? There's just the same thing as, as Donald Trump, you know. They, they stand for nothing. They're stupid. This is Adam Kokesh. Thanks for watching. Please share this video and support this production by going to patreon.com slash adamkokesh.